Now, machines which rule our lives are a constant theme of science fiction, but in all sorts of respects, they're reality, notably on the roads. The first traffic light is said to have been erected outside Parliament in 1868. In the 140 years since, traffic lights have spread across the nation like some form of multicolored acne. 14,000 road junctions are now controlled by them. They're said to be vital to our safety, but Martin Cassini doesn't think so. On a bus approaching King's Cross. It's outside rush hour, so we should sail through, especially if the claim is made about the congestion charge are true. But there's a reason why we're going nowhere fast. We complain about the traffic and blame other drivers, but could it be traffic controls that are the problem? There's too many red lights in London, I think. They need to be red for an eternity. They're a waste of time, the traffic lights. Are we waiting too long for nothing? Traffic lights make us stop when it's safe to go, defying common sense, extending journey times and producing congestion which costs the economy 20 billion a year. Astonishingly, the current system by which we live and die has never been tested. Most of it was just invented in a fairly ad hoc manner and often without real consultation or testing. What we've got here is at one time there probably would have been a person stood there making decisions based on where the needs were. That person's been replaced by an automatic system which has no flexibility or discretion. Traffic lights are a very crude, if you like, metaphor for um, being regulated and audited, told what to do, rather than being able to take control of your own destiny. I think what we hate doing is being forced to do things that make no sense. And the ultimate cry against bureaucracy is that this doesn't make sense or it's wasting time if you're blindly told to obey something or do something and you can't see the reason for it. Or you, you've been given a reason but that reason is clearly defective. Or inappropriate for Inapp the context of the moment. What happens when controls are absent? Is there a breakdown of civilization as we know it? Well, the traffic just flows a bit more freely, doesn't it? I mean, you've just got to be a bit more careful on the junction, that's all. Here we are in Gossip Square, as it's known, in North Shopping, Sweden. Tell me about this square. I mean, we're just standing in the middle of the street. Yeah, but you're allowed to stand here because there are no regulations. It was a regular traffic crossing with traffic lights and quite a lot of accident reported. And now, since it has been redesigned and the traffic lights are removed, there has been no accidents at all since September 2000. OK, motorists and able-bodied pedestrians might get on better without lights, but what if you're disabled or blind? The problem is the way drivers hog the road, dominate the street environment. Now, we've allowed them to do that by all our highway engineering things and so on. But what we should be thinking about now is how we can encourage drivers that they have to drive in a different way. So let's start taking these things away. It might be traffic lights first, it might be road markings, the white line, all those sorts of things. And then look at what that does to driver behavior and what it does to opening up the urban environment for pedestrians. Well, with us in the studio now, Martin Cassini, who authored that uh report or polemic, I suppose, uh, and Robert Gifford, who's um, of the uh, Parliamentary Advisory Council on Transport Safety. At the very least, you can't argue 
on the emissions point and the pollution point, they're very bad traffic lights from that point of view. Certainly there is a big question about whether traffic lights are the most effective way of managing traffic in an urban area. There's a common misconception that if you take away the lights people are going to drive fast. Actually the opposite is true. It's a counterintuitive idea but it's the green light that encourages the speed that licenses the aggression. If you take away the light and there's uncertainty at the junction, people naturally approach slowly and filter. That's just as we do. That is absolutely right, isn't it? People sit there at a traffic light, revving the engine, waiting to get away, and if they come up to a, light where, a junction where there's no light, they, they do go well, slowly. Well, all the examples, though, that people can quote from Sweden or from the Netherlands are in very, very low traffic volumes. A new hierarchy emerges with vulnerable road users at the top. Pedestrians in the shared space scenario, when there are no lights to dictate behaviour, are seen as fellow road users rather than obstacles in the way of the next light. That's a fair point. That's a fair, very fair point, and of course all motorists are pedestrians. I think we owe it to ourselves to try it and evaluate it properly. I can't really get away with the excuse of, um, like, be, I'm, I was late for school because of traffic, but yet yeah, that was the reason because the traffic lights did take ages to let everybody go. The lights, I reckon there'd be more traffic jams waiting to get across and then it'd be all chaotic. I don't think people are going to actually give enough to other people. Be polite if you like. You know, I don't think they're going to say, oh you go and then I'll go. They're not going to dovetail in. Oh, my hat. Oh, yes, I've got to eat my hat. <laughs> because I said I didn't think it would work without the lights. But people have been very good. And there was no queues. You usually wait 20 minutes at the lights. But not tonight. Five minutes. Move through. 
I timed it. <laughs> so five minutes to go from where to where? Well, we came from Clevedon, and normally we wait those lights in the town to come up, and it, it is about 20 minutes before we get home. But tonight it was just five minutes, that's all. Everyone's been quite sensible. There's uh, lots of people giving way. Now and then there's a falter because they don't know whether to or not to. Um, but as you see, no queues. So I'm more positive in my mind now. I can't believe the difference. It's absolutely astounding. I, a, a few days ago, this was just backed up with traffic. Every time you came down, you expected to wait. Now it's just instantly changed. What did I expect? Well, this was just one complete surprise. And not to see traffic queuing, pumping out fumes all day long. This is an absolute, absolute pleasure. Well, without lights, it's much better. I mean, it's less congested and it's probably easier to cross as well. And there's less queues for everybody, so it's just all round better. It's a lot easier to cross without the traffic lights and the cars flow a lot easier. It was much, much and it makes quicker. You like that, we just went across there and a lady stopped for us. And which doesn't normally happen with the lights because they just look at the lights. You're like about to cross and the people look at the lights and think, oh, the lights will come red in a minute. But they actually don't. Whereas if there's no lights, they'll look and think, oh, these people are struggling to cross and they tend to stop. The situation is about equal rights and responsibilities, not about priority for one set of road users at the expense of others. If the public were aware that here if the culture is one of sharing and equality and kindness and just acting as you do in all other walks of life, then it would work. But at the moment it's a bit of a surprise for drivers, but they do stop if you walk in front of them. It's certainly giving the sort of results that we would like to see. Um, the councillors and the local traffic engineers are, are very positive. I think they've been surprised with what they've seen today. This is fabulous. I can't believe the difference. It's absolutely astounding. Filter in turn. And that works. This is an absolute, absolute pleasure. And I would like to congratulate whoever has pushed this to happen. <laughs>